Facebook has lots of advice for anyone navigating the job market right now, from how to stand out on your resume to what employers are looking for in an interview. It's called Be the Unicorn, 12 Data-Driven Habits that Separate the Best Leaders from the Rest. And it's written by William Vanderblomen, who runs the, one of the world's top executive search firms. He's done more than 30,000 interviews and reviewed more than 30,000 resumes. And William joins us now. Thanks for being with Good us. Good morning. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me today. All right. So the biggest resume mistake, if you could tell people one thing that it's going to make someone just not even pay attention to it. Too much Too or long. extra. <laughs> well, I, I think people have taken to trying to, to modernize resumes and in doing so, they try a little too hard. Too much artwork, too many graphics, too many pictures. Um, a resume ought to be a foot in the door and it ought to focus on what you've actually done in your job, not what you think you might do in the future, not what uh, you think you want people to perceive you as, but here's what I got done. Because the single best predictor of future performance is past performance. Hmm. And I recall there was a time where photos were sort of forbidden. It sent a bad message. Has that changed in the digital era? It has. I think a, a profile picture is uh, totally appropriate. Uh, people go a little crazy with graphics and uh, all kinds of other frilly things. But a picture, think about your LinkedIn profile as a pretty good template for a resume. And what about for someone who's just getting out of college? They don't have a lot of experience. They might have worked at a fast food restaurant. What, what do you highlight on there to fill out the page? And someone said you shouldn't put your graduation date on there to tell them how old you are. Yeah, the, the age question is awfully uh, sensitive and is an off-limits thing for interviewers to be asking. There are ways to figure it out. I mean, what was your yeah. favorite movie when you were in high school? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mine was Top Gun. Yeah. I just dated <laughs> so, so there are ways around that. I don't know that it um, matters a whole lot one way or the other. You could, I can find out somebody's age if I really want to try. But the mm -hmm. main thing is just keep it simple. Treat it like the first couple innings of a baseball game. You're not going to win the game there. But you can certainly lose it. So stick to what you've done and keep it simple. And if you're low on experience, show what you've done outside of your job or how you've had to figure something out that you didn't ever have on your resume before. Mm -hmm. You show people how you can adapt to a new environment and they'll be ready to hire you as you graduate from high school or college and are looking for that next new environment. Let's talk about the job interview. The common question uh, is tell me about yourself, which seems easy enough, but what exactly are they looking for? What's a do and a don't for that question? Yeah, I think that tell me about yourself is actually a bit of a pass for the interviewer to break the ice, mm -hmm. but it ends up being one of the most awkward questions right. because you have some people who are shy and just say, uh, I have lived here 10 years. <laughs> uh, other people are like, well, I started walking at one and yeah. then I Preschool. So how do you temper the two? I think the, the key is to do your homework about the job you're interviewing for. If you can figure out what that company is about and how the role that you're interviewing for fits who you are, then when you're asked, oh, tell me about yourself, you can say, well, I love coming into a, an environment that's fresh and new. I, I was a director of marketing for a startup and we grew the email list by 400% in two years. We had to figure it out as we went. So as you're interviewing me for a marketing position in a, in a company that's growing really fast, that sounds like what some people would call uh, chaotic or unsettling, I actually thrive. I can tell you more about my personality inventory and how it lines up, but I'm really excited to interview with you all based on what I know about me and what I've read about you. What about after the interview? Should you follow up with an email? Should you send a thank you email, a thank you note? You know, that seems like something outdated, but it seems like people, it would make you stand out. A lot of people don't think about that. Old school is in right now. A handwritten note goes a long way with me. I get them all the time from people. And yeah, it costs however much a stamp costs today, but uh, it, it really does. The human touch is what's going to stand out in the next few years, especially as AI and tech replace some human jobs and some others are needed that we didn't even know about. The human touch is what will last. And a, a thank you note, a follow up, something intentional, that will go a long way and help you stand out of the crowd. Well, William, thank you. For more, you can follow William on social media and check out his website. There it is. Be the Unicorn is the name of the book. Thanks, William. Thank you. Have a great day. You, you too. too.